Hello my friends, this is our Joshua Collins and um, hope you'll enjoy this video of our Bible study we had after our homeless outreach. Um, also if you can, um, uh, please pray regarding uh, the YouTube uh, channel I have. Uh, it looks like they're going to be taking away the YouTube editor. So that's how you do a lot of my videos actually, and all the cutting and splicing and all that kind of stuff and different effects and things. So. Um, for me to keep doing that, I probably have to have my own computer and internet connection, which I don't have right now. So, anyways, uh, just uh, maybe you can pray for that situation, and and uh, hopefully they keep the YouTube editor, which they're supposed to be getting rid of on September 20th, or I'm able to get some uh, help with that. So, anyways, uh, anyways, I hope to be able to keep this ministry go going, God willing. But I hope you enjoy this video. Please do share it, and if you'd like to, join my Facebook group, Homeless Advocates for Christ, and. Um, Please pray that the homeless get the help they need and that many uh, come to the Lord through our work. And um, anyway, I hope you enjoy this video. May God bless you as you seek first the kingdom always. Bye -bye. Okay, so um, this is the first question I wanted to start with you guys and um, see what, what your answers are. But what's the difference? You know, we've heard two sayings, like with the song we just sang about water, he turned into wine. And then we have, you know, you heard the other saying, that if you are given lemons, let's make, you know, make lemonade out of it, right? Yeah. So what's the difference between those two sayings? What would you say uh, is the fundamental difference between those two sayings? Now we're talking about Jesus making water into wine versus if you get lemons, make lemonade. What's the difference between those two sayings? Uh, water has, he has light for you. Light. Okay, that's some, well, not quite what I'm looking for, but... Well, it's one, kind of a deeper well, the, question. The saying, yeah, the two the, sayings. If yeah. You get lemons. It's kind of a bitter thing. It's like know? sour. Yeah. Yeah, you're getting ripped off or something. Yeah. Like buying a lemon. Okay. <laughs> Instead of feeling ripped off, take the yeah. lemon and make some lemonade. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Sell the junkie car. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Not quite what I'm looking for, but think about it. Think about it a little more. Let me remember, say it again. What's the difference between Jesus taking water and making it wine versus if you're you are given lemons and you make lemonade? What's the major difference there? Well, it's the kind of, amount of people. Hmm? What do you mean by the amount of people? The people that were there, he was making water into wine. Okay. To serve to all of them. Okay. Anyone else? What do you think? Yeah. I think he's show, he's showing you by him turning water into wine. Mm-hmm. Uh, Good. Okay. Well, water can't. Water isn't wine, so right. That's a, a it's like a miracle that he trains water right, right. into wine. Now you're and getting lemons, closer. Lemons can easily make lemonade. That's where I'm getting. Lemonade. Good. So good. That's not, that's not a, you know, it's a drastic difference. You can't turn right? water into yeah. wine, but Jesus can turn water. Into good. So it's a, like a miracle. There we go. Okay, and that's what I'm looking for. Yeah, that's so great. Awesome. I'm glad you guys got it. Okay. I'm like, I wonder if they could get this if I ask this question. I hope they can figure it out. Okay, that's great. <laughs> so that, that's the thing. When you get Jesus involved in a situation, right? Miracles can happen, right? They had water, they needed wine. Well, of course you can't make uh, wine with just water, right? But when with Jesus, of course you can do that, right? All things are possible, All things are possible with God, right? And um, But the difference with lemons to lemonade is that, well, in our own strength, we can do that. If I'm given a bunch of lemons, I can make lemonade, right? right? Now, I probably couldn't take those lemons and make orange juice, right? Or, or pineapple juice or whatever, right? Yeah. So, um, that's the thing is we can do certain things in our own strength. And then there's things that require God's strength, right? And, and um, a lot of times when we're doing our, our Christian walk or just dealing with life, we're walking in our own strength versus the Spirit right walking in with the, with God's help and strength so um, let me ask you this what are some examples of us doing something uh, versus God doing it or doing something in our lives have you noticed the difference like what's the difference when you're trying to make something happen versus allowing God to make it happen or seeing God yeah well, when we're doing it, go ahead when we're doing it, it's like you know we can't I mean it's impossible yeah. Yeah. But when God does it, it's yeah. like bam, He does it. And that's yeah. It. Yeah. But, now, what, do you have an example in your life that ex you experienced where you actually had saw God working versus you trying to make it happen? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I did. 
Mm -hmm. I had hepatitis C. Uh huh. And God took it out of my body. Wow, awesome. Praise and God. That's something that I could have never done. No yeah. No matter how good I ate, no sure. matter what I ate, yeah. no matter what I drank. Mm hmm. But God did it just like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. Amen. You just prayed, right? Prayed to the Lord. And I have been praying. I've been yeah. claiming that I had that, that, that I didn't have it. Mm hmm. God had healed me. Yeah. And I ended up in the hospital and when they did all the blood tests, yeah. they showed nothing of any kind of hepatitis. Wow, that's awesome. Praise I mean, God. Every sign of it was gone. Amazing. And that doesn't usually happen, right? Or I don't know much about no, hepatitis, no, but no, it doesn't it can be happen. cured with medicine but not like it was cured by God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. big difference, right? I mean they can they can cure it to a certain degree. Yeah. But they can't take all the signs of it out of your body. Yeah. Huh, interesting. Yeah, amen. Awesome. Amen. Thanks for sharing that. Awesome. Now, you had something? Go ahead. You're taking your eyes off God and you're putting your eyes on the world. Mm hmm. And when, when you let God do something, yeah. Um, you do it in a different manner. Yeah. You do it God's way. Yeah. Amen. Instead of the world, the world, worldly way. Yeah. You know, and I, I, I know this, I don't know if this really pertains all the way, but mm -hmm. when I was a little girl, yeah. and I first prayed and prayed and prayed and believed in God, it was because my dog went missing. Mm. My little dog. Yeah. And I was like seven. Mm -hmm. And um, all I know is I prayed. Yeah. And I know that it was only God because it had been three weeks. Yeah. I thought my dog was gone forever and everybody gave up. Yeah. And nobody kept helping me look for him. Sure. And I, I cried and cried and cried and I prayed so much. I'll never forget this. Yeah. And then we're driving down the road one day and there's my dog. Mmm. Wow. Just like Isn't that the neat very next day. Oh, praise God. Three weeks. Awesome. Yeah. And yeah. I don't, you know, uh -huh. like, what, what more can you believe in that he can help you? Sure. Especially, yeah. You know? ha Amen. How about uh, maybe some of your loved ones that you've been praying for for their salvation or anything like that? Anyone see anyone? Any answered prayers? I in that? haven't had any answered prayers. Not yet. Yeah. yeah, that's good. I got one because uh -huh. my, my dad, uh, he's always uh, grew up, grew up, he's always drinking and yeah. all that. And uh, later on in life, he's still drinking. And, mm -hmm. and I, had, I had an opportunity oh, to, to talk to him on the phone. Yeah. Didn't really get through to him too much, so mm -hmm. I just I just said okay, let it go, you know. Yeah. And I just uh, started praying for uh, asking the Holy Spirit to go and minister to him. Yeah. Because he was in Louisiana, mm -hmm. and I was in uh, California at the time. I just I think I was in uh, New Jersey actually. Yeah. But I kept praying, and asking the Holy Spirit to minister to him, and uh, mm -hmm. a while later, I don't know if it was months or whatever the exact time frame was, but. Uh, mm -hmm. Next time I talked to him, he's on the phone. He said, "Yeah, he goes, uh, I got born again." He goes, uh, "Some people were coming through town, and I met them, and they led me to the Lord, and now I'm reading my Bible." And wow, it was uh, amazing. Cause yeah, I, you know, there was no way I could get through to him. Yeah, and uh, the Holy Spirit just set it all up. And wow, it. Yeah. awesome. Yeah, that's a perfect example. Yeah. Yeah. His love. You do it by His love, and you're doing Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 I mean, sometimes we get find ourselves trying to change people, right? Yeah. And that's kind of sometimes it's our flesh, right? We're trying to maybe. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I mean, I think that God wants us to witness to people, but I realize now that. Uh, you can't make them change. Exactly. You can't make. Exactly. Right. And you can't. Sometimes, um, you know, we'd beat a dead horse and it's maybe someone that's real close to us and it's kind of frustrating sometimes, but we got to sometimes just release that person and let the Lord work on them in His timing, right? That's what we're saying. Just like, yeah, 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 right? I want, once you planted the seed, that's we should plant the seed, but then you guys, after a while, it's like you got to let just release them to the Lord and let Him work on their heart. So um, that's good. Um, let's see. Let's look at, uh, let me ask you this. What, Bible says, without what it's impossible to please God. Works? <laughs> Not quite. <laughs> Wait, what was the question? 
Without what it's impossible to please God. Isn't that in Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6? <laughs> well, I'm asking you, what is uh, faith? It's faith. Good, yeah, faith, good. And yes, we're going to Hebrews, that's right. Chapter 11. Now, this is a great story, a lot of, a lot of different great stories of uh, people that brought God into their situation or hadn't, you know, had seen the miracles of God and all that kind of stuff, but it kind of encourages our faith. Now, there's a lot of things we can give to the Lord, um, you know, like his mother gave the water to, to Jesus and then he turned it into wine. There's some things that we need to, of course, we'll get a gift to Jesus too sometimes that we're holding on to, but we're going to get that later. But Hebrews chapter 11, we'll go ahead and read that first. Um, Hebrews chapter 11. Okay. Great examples of faith. It says, what is faith? It's the confident, I'm not sure what version this is, but it's the confident assurance of that of that what we hope for is going to happen it is the evidence of things we cannot yet see god gave his approval to people in days of old because of their faith by faith we understand that the entire universe was formed at god's command that what we now see did not come from anything that can be seen now let me ask you this is that a miracle that uh, what we now see came from things that we cannot see yes yeah that's pretty amazing isn't it yeah. right yeah that's a miracle yeah now we have, um, I'm going to move further down here. Uh, verse 21 here. It is by faith that Jacob, when he was old and dying, blessed each of uh, Joseph's sons and bowed worship as he leaned on his staff. It is by faith that Joseph, when he was about to die, confidently spoke of God's bringing the people of Israel out of Egypt. He was so sure of it that he commanded them to carry his bones with them when they left. It was by faith that Moses' parents hid him for three months. They saw that God had given them an unusual child, and they were not afraid of what the king might do. It was by faith that Moses, when he grew up, refused to be treated as the son of Pharaoh's daughter. He chose to share the oppression of God's people instead of enjoying the fleeting pleasures of sin. And it goes on. Uh, now this uh, little last portion here says, Well, how much more do I need to say? It would take too long to recount the stories of the faith of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, David, Samuel, and the prophets. By faith these people overthrew kingdoms, ruled with justice, and received what God had promised them. They shut the mouths of lions. Now what does that mean, shut the mouths of lions? What are they talking about there? They said, shh. <laughs> 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 and stuff like that. What's that? I don't know, the people that don't, don't believe, that don't talk, speak highly. Well, think about this. When they were, uh, the Christians in the early church, let's say in times of Roman times, um, or maybe before, even before that, were, were uh, uh, persecuted, what are some of the things they would do to persecuted Christians? They would feed them to... The lions. That's right, right? Now, I think that this verse is specifically talking about a prophet, Daniel, right? Didn't he get thrown into the lion's den? Daniel yeah. in the lion's den, right? Yeah. And for some reason, that lion didn't eat him, did it? Nope. Yeah, that's right. So that's one example, right? Man, where, man yeah, right. Amen. Now that would that be a miracle? Is that not Jesus intervening in a situation? Absolutely. Right? Is that not a miracle? I mean, that, that's like, uh, what are the chances that a hungry lion isn't going to eat Daniel? Pretty small. If he, that lion's hungry, right? So um, then it says that they they quench the flames of fire. Now what's an example of that? Remember, you guys, remember an example of that? There you go. Yeah, can you explain a little bit about that? Sorry about the light. That was, uh, <laughs> that was Daniel's uh, contemporaries, the three uh, Hebrew boys. That, uh, mm -hmm. The king, Nebuchadnezzar, I believe it was, made, yeah. a, made a statue. He told everyone they had to bow down and worship as soon as the music played. Yeah. And uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego said that they wouldn't do it. Yeah. And then the king uh, had them brought before all the uh, brought in over by the there was a furnace they had a fiery furnace and yeah he gave him one last chance to to worship uh, his, yeah his image yeah that he had made and uh, yeah he said they wouldn't do it mm -hmm. and he said he was going to throw them in the pit into the fire yeah and they said well what, what you decide to do is what you decide to do but we're not gonna we're not gonna worship it yeah and so uh, they didn't they played the music again and then they mm -hmm. grabbed them uh, the guards or grabbed them and threw them into the fiery furnace and yeah. the guards that threw them in died from mm -hmm. the heat coming off because it had been heated extra hot just because the king was mad you know 
Mm. And so he threw him in there, threw three of them in there, and then I don't know how the window or how he saw, but <clears throat> he looked inside and there's four people walking around. And he said one of them looks like the Son of God. Yeah. And so as you say, that was Jesus intervening mm -hmm. again mm -hmm. into the, uh, the um, again back to faith again. Praise in, God. In, in the faith yeah. of of his children. Yeah. Because they had chosen to stand against the things yeah. that God said to stand against. Yeah. And he backed them up. Amen. In the, in the fiery furnace. Amen. Thanks for sharing, brother. That's exactly right. See. So, that's exciting, you know, and then it says, uh, continues on, they escaped death by the edge of the sword. The, their weakness was turned to strength. They became strong in battle and put whole armies to flight. Uh, women received their loved ones back again from the dead. Can anyone uh, remember maybe an example of that where someone was raised from the dead? You saw that in the Bible, right, Jesus? Yeah, Lazarus. Not, yeah and Lazarus, right? Yeah. That's right. Tabitha also. Remember Tabitha in the Bible? And, um, and Kings. I don't remember. The All is well. All is well. The All mother well. that held her son mm -hmm. until and because of her faith. Yeah. Her son was resurrected but back to life. Mm-hmm. Like when they ask her, every time oh, yeah, in the pro she kept saying, all is well. Mm -hmm. I know, because I used it when I was in the hospital the first time. And when they took me in, they were going to put me in three or four stents. And when they got in there, they couldn't mm. find nothing wrong. Mm. Uh, all is well. And I kept saying, all is well. And she goes, what did you say? I go, all is well. And after I came out, she goes, what did you mean, all is well? So I explained to her about the biblical story. Which one is it again? What story? I'm Kings. not sure if I know that one. Yeah, it's where the prophet's going through the land. and, and Elijah? Stays, I don't know which one. He stays, oh. at, he stays at a certain house. Probably one Elijah or Elijah. And a little room. Oh. And then uh, he asks the, the woman there, he goes, what, what, you know, what can I give you for all you've done for me? And she says, I want a child. Oh, okay. So she has, a, he tells her she has a child. And then, uh, like... Uh, a little while later, the son's out in the field with the dad, and all of a sudden he's holding his head, and he dies. And so the dad takes him back to the mom, and the mom has him in, lays yeah. him in the room. Yeah, we got a bad headache. And then the, uh, the mom tells the servant to, to make a, 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 a donkey for her. So she gets on a donkey, and she tells the servant, mm -hmm. take, me to the, take me to the prophet. Oh, okay. And she goes, don't stop, no matter yeah. if I start, you know making noises or whatever because yeah. it's such a rough ride yeah so she goes out heading toward the prophet and then the prophet's servant or one of the sons of the prophet they called him comes out and asks her mm -hmm. what do you want what do you need and she says all is well all is well hmm. and then she goes all the way to the prophet and then uh i can't remember the rest of it yeah i can't remember that story for some reason i haven't looked and that up came. but the son comes okay. back alive he comes i think he comes back and lays on him yeah, I remember that part. I remember yeah, that. Yeah. yeah. I remember that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think he sends it with a staff. Okay. Oh, yeah, with the staff. Tell him to lay the staff on him, huh? No, there's Elijah or Elijah, I think, one of those two. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Okay. Oh, good. That's a good. Good, good. Okay, so um, we'll read the rest of this. But others trusted God and were tortured, preferring to die rather, rather than turn from God and be free. They placed their hope in the resurrection to a better life. I think some versions say that uh, so that they would have a better resurrection, they refused to be released, basically. And then so, some were mocked, their backs were cut open with whips, others were chained in dungeons, some died by stoning, and some were sawed in half. Others were killed with the sword, some went about in skins of sheep and goats, hungry and oppressed and mistreated. They were too good for this world. They wandered over deserts and mountains, hiding in caves and holes in the ground. All these people we have mentioned received God's approval because of their faith. Yet none of them received all that God had promised, for God had better uh, things in mind for us that would also benefit them. For they can't receive the prize at the end of the race until we finish the race. That's what this version says. Um, interesting, I've never seen that kind of version. But Anyways, um, some other versions say uh, they weren't to be made perfect apart from us. Right. That's another version. So, um, I don't know what version this is. What is this? New Living Translation. Okay. So, anyways, um, but the main point is about faith, right? That that um, faith and bringing God in the situation can change everything, right? And and sometimes it's, 
It can be changing us so that we're not fearful when we're facing death or persecution, right? Mm -hmm. But it also can be where he changes the situation where you're not going to have to die. Right. But either way, whether it changes you or the situation, you bring God in the picture, but either one that can happen, that's that's amazing, right? So let me ask you this. This is a, more of a personal question. What are some things you need to give to Jesus? Now, Jesus' mother gave Jesus water to turn into wine, right? What are some things that maybe you need to give to Jesus that you can see now or um, you know, seen in the past or whatever that you need to give to the Lord and just More let trust. Him work on that? What's that? More trust. More trust. Good. Yeah, that's great. Any uh, other things, situations or problems, anything? More time. <laughs> give him more time. Yeah. Give him your, yeah? yeah? That's good. Dedication. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. yeah. Think about this. You give Jesus your time, right, and do what he wants, and is there a good chance that some pretty awesome things are going to happen? Yes. Right? Yeah. Sometimes we give our time to the wrong things and, and not to the Lord, and how can God work in that situation, right? It's just like if uh, you're just trying to make lemons into lemonade, but you, let's say you really want orange juice, in your own strength you can't do it, right? You're not giving Jesus any time, and all you keep getting is lemonade. You're like, man, I want this orange juice so bad, and you, you know, but you're not giving no time to the Lord to make it happen. So this is an example of another, um, I guess, something you can give to the Lord. How about addictions, right? People sometimes they have an addiction issue, and they're trying to fight it in their own strength, but they can't, right? So then if they give their life to the Lord, right? And he intervenes. Have you ever seen someone delivered when they give their life to the Lord from an addiction or something? Right. Have you ever seen that before? I mean, I, I've seen people get set free from alcohol and different yeah, things like that. I have seen that. Yeah, and I got set free. I used to go to the clubs and bars. Yeah, you know, so. You still do, don't you? <laughs> that's all, no, 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 I don't. Well, I go there to preach now, but yeah. that's about I it. I don't know. <laughs> I'm going to give you a little bit of your testimony. Yeah. So you can come back and yeah. spread the word. That's right. That's what. It, that's about what it was, too. <laughs> yeah. What are you going to say, Jennifer? Just our problems in general. That's right. It just, right. It goes back to trust, though, like faith. Yeah. Faith. Yeah, yeah. Because some of us can't do it on our own. Yeah. We need his, his comfort, his courage. His, that's right. You know, Amen. That's how we're made. Yeah. We're made that way. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Too much, too many of us try to do everything on our own. Yeah. Yeah. And not give it over to us. Yeah. Let me think about this. How about our worries? Yeah. Can we give our worries to the Lord? Yeah. Sometimes we worry about stuff, right? Yeah, no. but he gets it back. Pat <laughs> <laughs> always tells me worry cancels my prayer. Oh, wow. That's yeah. a good it's not good to worry because then yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, I think fear and faith don't go together, do they? You can't have both, right? Yeah. So, just in your daily life, you know, you have... Uh, it's amazing, too, when you have faith, how much peace you get, right? Right. It's awesome. Yeah. And your situation doesn't even have to change. Just if you have peace, knowing that God's going to deal with that, right? Yeah. It, it's like it frees your soul up. You're not bound in fear and worry and doubt and everything. Like a word of knowledge. Yeah, or just a scripture that might encourage you, or word of knowledge, whatever. Yeah, however God does it. So. You can't walk with God, you walk with the devil too. Yeah, that's right. Amen. And this is something I, uh, I was, uh, I was reading um, one of those devotional things, and this is something I saw in there. It was kind of encouraging. It might encourage you guys too. So I figured I'd share this, but. It, says God never takes away except to give us back something better and then uh, it says it often takes time for God to turn a painful situation into good so those are two things we should always try to remember too right have you ever had something taken from you that you didn't want taken from you uh, yeah. my yeah. son wants really my ex-husband took my son oh wow interesting try to get custody yeah it took me a year to get your child and get, yeah yeah got him back yeah. Fighting somebody yeah. that had money when I didn't. Yeah. It's hard. Oh, yeah, that's hard. tough. Yeah. Yep. That's a tough deal. And there's, like, uh, anyone else, anything? Did, did God ever take something out of your life that uh, needed to be taken out of your life 
and then replaced it with something better. Like yeah. my first life away. Yeah, right? My wife, the marriage of 30 years, all my mm -hmm. Yeah. Just took everything. Away. Really? All my addiction. Yeah. And then you found your wife. And gave me a new life. Yeah. yeah. There you go. I, I yeah, forgot he, gave me bill before. But like the thing is, if I would have... If I would have paid attention, yeah. he was talking to me. Yeah. Instead of going to a psychiatrist and getting medication because I was hearing voices. Yeah. Then I wouldn't have gotten a medication. I wouldn't have got drugs. And yeah. I would have listened to him. Yeah. So are you saying thing. like you would have never lost that in the first place yeah. if you had your faith? Yeah. I wouldn't have. Yeah. If, it, it would have grew and developed. But the, the thing is, you know, that's what God wanted. You know, His intentions is not to separate you from your your family but mm -hmm. to unite you reconcile you with them yeah but we choose to go you know we want to do it our way so bad mm -hmm. on our own yeah, yeah that sometimes it just you know we we end up running from turning away from god and in mm -hmm. the process we turn we turn into the arms of the, of the devil yeah and when he gets a hold of you he's going to throw you every which way except but loose yeah and when he's done you you know you're pretty tore up you're yeah pretty beat down yeah and then that's when you you finally realize god help me right yeah i'm sorry mm-hmm it comes running mm -hmm. but by then you know, you're all jacked up yeah Maybe damage is done I, I ended up crippled huh? mm. you look crippled yeah i am i'm still crippled i go to a chiropractor every time mm. <laughs> i broke my neck Mm. Wow. Crushed all my ribs, my pelvic, almost every bone in my body was broken. Wow. wow. My heart was bruised so bad, I flatlined three times. Mm. What did you do? I ran into a tree and fell asleep. Oh, yeah, because I was, I was doing good and then I decided to go somewhere to make some money and just, you know, instead of going to church. Mm -hmm. I, you know, listening to God to help me, I said, well, you know, I'm going to handle this myself. I'm going to go make some money mm. and pay off the courts and go to pay off a drug diversion class or something. And mm. yeah. it didn't happen. Mm. I ended up running into a tree and then I went into a Christian mm. a whole school for about three and a half years. Mm -hmm. mm. But, you know, you know, that was, you know, God said, well, let me see you run now. <laughs> Ah! <laughs> 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 well, I was rocking around like this, the dragon just waddles like a duck. He said, come on, come on, come on, yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Walks like a duck, it's a duck. Yeah. But, uh, he put me in a place where I, all I can do is this. Yeah. That's what he has to do sometimes, right? Huh? That's what he has to do sometimes, yeah. right? Yeah. Just like that, that lamb where he breaks the leg. Yep. Right? Exactly. Yeah. He yeah. stay with me now. Yep, yep. But he... Our relationship got so strong. Mm -hmm. It's just like I'm not. You know, the thing is, like we have. If you have a good, strong relationship with God, mm -hmm. and you you put yourself up for His service, mm -hmm. you know, the fruit of the Spirit. Yeah. Is the fruit of the uh, characteristics of Christ. The yeah. Holy Spirit. Yeah. So we don't. We always want to strive for that, but we can never in our own power. Way yeah. Unless we're serving, and when we're serving, you were talking about the peace of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. When we're serving Him, He empowers us. Yeah, that's the key. No you have to be empowered, joy. right? Yeah. There's no greater joy. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, and like what says in the Book of Acts? Remember, they had to pray. They prayed for boldness. They to, to preach the word of God. It wasn't they were doing it all in their own strength. And then he empowered them to go out and boldly preach and do whatever else. And that's the thing, whatever God's calling you to do, you don't have... Says, he says his power is made perfect in weakness. So sometimes we may not feel strong in a certain thing. But then that's a lot of times when God can really show up. And when you're, you're like, I can barely do this, God. And he's like, okay, now I can do something then. You, you know, you're calling on me now. Now you got him that's helping it, you. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's happened. They called me up the night before and said, we need you to teach. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there's some critics there. <laughs> oh, right? Yeah, of course. <laughs> so, yeah, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's study, you try, but then there's so much different interruptions on it. They call me to do some other work. And other yeah. Stuff. 
uh -huh. family pressures and stuff. So you don't even get a chance to read your message. Uh -huh. When you get a message, then you can say, oh yeah, this will work. Yeah. But you, you know, you're supposed to go over it a few times and you yeah. don't even get a chance to. Because you, you go to church and you find out there's nobody there. Everybody's supposed to come and help. you got to set it up. Yeah. you got to set up a... Um, we're going to have a... a hot luck lunch, you got to get all that prepared, mm -hmm. you got to set up the sound system, Yeah. set up chairs and the pulpit and everything and get everything ready. Yeah. Uh, yeah. A lot of work, so, man. Yeah. And it then is. you, mm -hmm. by that, that time, by the time you're done, you know, sweaty and tired, mm -hmm. you get ready to sit down and do your message and everybody's showing up and you look up and you go, oh, I don't have time to read through it. Yeah. So when you're delivering it, you just got to say, hey, Lord, this is yours. Mm -hmm. Help me. <laughs> you deliver it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, sometimes we're going to be caught in situations where we really need, you know, the help of the Lord. So I think he definitely wants us to call on him. And, and it comes through because the, yeah. you know, a lot of times it's like, you know, the reason he didn't allow me to read it because they didn't even teach the message. Mm. I thought about it, but it was a whole different thing. Mm-hmm. And I went, wow. Yeah. <laughs> I, I didn't realize that, man, I'm messing up. I'm staying. <laughs> I, I wish I would have read it. <laughs> but, you know, everybody was like, because they taught, they recorded it, and everybody was saying, wow. Even the grandkids, they were saying, you were funny. You mm -hmm. understood what you were saying. Went, yeah. <laughs> Maybe he's re yeah, redirecting you. Yeah. yeah. There's one lady always goes, <laughs> I use that as the, you know, the, the Holy Spirit when I was teaching it. Mm. I said, yeah, it's a flame. It's a no, I see, yeah. <laughs> so everybody, yeah, the pastor, he goes, he was in Hawaii, because he said, oh, you taught him a new handshake. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> wow, that's good. Okay, well, getting late, we'll go ahead and close here, but um, yeah, thanks for sharing, everyone. But yeah, the main thing is that whatever you're dealing with, your problems, maybe struggling with addiction issues, whatever it is, give it to the Lord, right? That's yeah. that comes down to, and um, have faith, don't especially give up. When you're at your weakest. That's right, especially. Turn to him, yeah. Turn to him. Yeah, trust Him and turn to Him. That's right. Amen. So let's pray. Oh, um, actually, let me um, get everyone's prayer request too. We can pray for specific needs and uh... um, this is a song I wrote uh, I've been over 10 years on the streets with the homeless as part of my missionary work you could say for the Lord so um, yeah I know firsthand knowledge was ha like what it's like to be homeless and uh, to experience the police harassment police arrests jail um, all that, you know, so uh, this song is dear to my heart. Uh, the homeless are dear to my heart. I am thankfully, I'm in a church now as a worship leader and, and um, have a, somewhere to go now, but for years that wasn't so, and, um, but God opened that door for me recently. So I thank God for that, but uh, still I'm always thinking about the homeless and trying to defend their rights and be there for them. So anyways, this song is about two homeless people uh, that I'm sure some of you can relate to. And uh, I'll go ahead and start some. It's called Jesus Holds Me. It's also um, on YouTube. Thank you. Oh, also, uh, if you want, you can join my Facebook group, Homeless Advocates for Christ. And I also have a YouTube channel. It's just R. Joshua Collins. Okay, so we'll go ahead and start this song. Mm -hmm. Backpack on his back Just got up From the railroad track You know, it's been a hard life On the road Just laid off Nowhere to go, he said I don't have the American Dream, no fancy Cars, but Jesus holds Me, and I know What lies ahead of me Cause heaven knows I love the Lord on the ground. 
the ground They said, you can't be sleeping here No trespassing She shed a tear, she said I don't have the American dream No fancy cars, but Jesus holds me And I know what lies ahead of me Cause heaven knows I love the Lord Who loved her money, they said I don't have the American dream No fancy cars, but Jesus holds me And I know what lies ahead of me Cause heaven knows I love the Lord Okay, folks, one more time, this is the 10-year plan for ending homelessness in Orange County.